Hello there, my YouTube chums. Today you find me playing Robin of the Wood, developed and published by Odin Computer Graphics for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum in 1985. It is available in both 48K and 128K versions. The 128K model features this banging tune throughout. This is a fantastic game, which completely passed me by at the time. I've only just discovered, thanks to the games database at the World of Spectrum website. A wonderful place, which I urge you all to visit immediately. Really, pause me, take a look and then pop back. See what I mean? Wonderful. The aim of the game is to win the mythical Silver Arrow, or Shaft of Power, at a tournament arranged by the Sheriff. It's a trap! There's no need for me to worry about that though, for as you'll see from my playing here, the tournament is never somewhere I'm ever likely to reach. Still, I'm having tremendous fun trying. Playing this game reminds me of a myth, a legend, attached to Fortescue Forest, which was once much bigger, covering half of southern England. It was ruled by a notorious sheriff who was prone to petty malpractices. His high taxation was in fact gratuitous groat gathering. The sheriff's ambition was to fill, with groat, a colossal crock that reached to the ornate ceiling of his palatial throne room. The sheriff's greed angered the honourable Lord Fortescue of Old, who had renounced his title to become Fortescue of the Hud, and his ambition was to relieve the sheriff of his ill-gotten groats. He called a meeting of his most capable, and some might say his merriest of men, to thrash out a plan. What we need to do is this, said Friar Melbourne. We need to storm the castle, steal the crock, and have a public display of redistribution of wealth. That will teach the sheriff the error of his ways and put him on the path to redemption. Brilliant idea, Friar, sir. How will we go about it? I was coming to that Norris of the deal. We need to build a giant catapult. Wheel it to just outside the castle, but before the moat and away from the patrolling guards, and fire ourselves over the battlements. And then, Friar, sir? Simple. We need to search the castle, find the croc, sneak past the guards, steal it. Though it won't really be stealing, sir. It'll be redistribution. Don't interrupt, Norris. Steal the jar, croc, get out of the castle again, assemble in the village square, and make a big showy show of handing out the money. That's inspired, Friar, sir. But... What if the sheriff doesn't see the error of his ways and is just very cross? What then? Ah, well, then we either get put into prison to rot with the rats or get banished. Banished, sir? Yes, Norris, banished to Stinkwick Village. Oh, don't worry, though, it's a fine place. The only drawback is its embarrassing name and lack of a sewage system. But we can all live with that. The merry men and Maid Arabella all paused a moment to contemplate their possible futures. But just as with a stake, the plan was on. The woods were scoured, trees chopped down, sawn, shaped, fiddled with, until, before you could say, but really, how did he make that so quickly? The grand catapult had been constructed, and the merry men and Maid Arabella and the cat Winston of the woods lucked on with pride. I say, the catapult can be disguised with catkins, chirped Bunty of the Dale. It's a pity caterpillar tracks haven't been invented yet, huh? quoth Friar Melbourne. Or that we cut and get it in through the cat accoombs instead, quipped Fortescue of the Hud. The villagers will be exalted if we pull this off, chipped in Maid Arabella, who liked to be a bit different. The plan went like clockwork, with the band of men and Arabella and Winston of the Woods safely launched over the battlements and onto the cover of the rooftop swimming pool. The sheriff was well ahead of his time. They stealthed along corridors, peered around corners, and lifted keys from sleeping guards. Finally, the merry men entered the throne room. And there it was, bathed in the moonlight, which stole through an arrow slit like a giant energy-saving light bulb. The fabled, giant, overflowing Groot Croc. It was Norris of the Dale who remarked what all were thinking. It's very big, isn't it? We never thought this through. How do we get it out? We don't have to get the croc out, lads. We have pockets, declared Friar Melbourne. Yes, you're right. We have conveniently massive pockets, added Norris of the Dale, and room in our hats and in our quivers. And so they set to work, filling pockets, hats and quivers, jingling and jangling past the still snoring guards and through the front gate. The next morning, the final phase of the plan was put into action. 
posters declaring the Great Groot Giveaway were designed, printed and pasted up all around the village. And before you could say, come on, really, how did you manage all that in like virtually no time at all? Or has the printing press even been invented yet? The village square was filled to bursting with every man, woman and child from miles around. The anticipation was palpable. Fortescue of the HUD cleared his throat and spoke. <clears throat> ah, villagers of Fortescue Forest, you have been mightily taxed. Sometimes this is all very well. Amenities have been provided for which we should all be grateful. We all remember what the smell was like before the pipes were put in. And there was a confused silence. This didn't sound like the rhetoric of rebellion at all. But, continued Fortescue of the HUD, Recently, the taxes are just for silliness sake, for the sake of a giant Groot Croc exhibit. But that taxation is no more. Today, the Groots come back to you. He gave the signal to Maid Arabella and Winston of the Woods, who together fired the catapult, which launched a thousand shiny coins into the air. While the villagers were jubilant at this sparkling spectacle, a shadow loomed over the square. It was the sheriff. The jubilation gave way to silence. And the sheriff spoke at last. <laughs> people of Fortescue Woods, my people, I now see the error of my greedy ways. What does it profit a man to gain a croc as giant and wonderful as it was, but lose his soul? <laughs> you are welcome to your money back. <laughs> that said, we need to raise the taxes today. Just a coincidence, I assure you. <laughs> Who can say that they have not noticed the lack of leisure facilities in the forest? There was a murmur of assent. Yes, yes, yes. That's what this forest needs. So I am proposing a zip wire. A zip wire for all. Just imagine. It will feel like you're flying through the air like ravens. Uh -huh. So, uh, if you wouldn't mind just dropping your groats in the baskets carried by my men. Yes, those with the heavy, spiky weaponry. Then those facilities will be built before you can say zippity doo da <laughs> Who could not consent to such a reasonable request? Groats were given, and the villagers went home empty-handed but happy. A treetop ride was on the way. So, rolls well, it ends well, as they say. Unlike my game. I think my uh, battling staff has been tampered with. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, tell your friends, like me. Until next time, this is Lord Fortescue saying, Toodle Pipsy, and see you in the HUD, my YouTube chums.